Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to Dear Fat Girl. The other day I was on, I think YouTube Live or Instagram Live, I forget, but if you don't follow my Instagram and Snapchat, they'll be right here. Um, I was on something live. <laughs> I mentioned to you guys an idea I had for a Dear Fat Girl video about, um, basically about not being able to eat in front of people. And I wasn't sure, I knew it wasn't like an only me thing, but I wasn't sure if it was like an all of us thing or like maybe just a couple of us weirdos thing. But it seems like if it is just us weirdos, there's a lot of us. So I thought I would uh, address it and kind of tell you guys my story and basically where I'm at now, how I can potentially help you hopefully, uh, but we'll just jump into it. So from the time that I was super, super young, basically, probably uh, elementary school age, I could not eat in front of other people. And this, except for my immediate family, basically. So like my mom and my four brothers and my sister. Um, them I could eat in front of whatever, like your girl's gotta eat at some point, right? <laughs> so I live with them. So um, I was able to eat in front of them. But outside of them, anyone at school or anything like that, um, and through adulthood, anyone at work, anyone, you know, I was dating, any friends, anything like that, I just was not able to eat in front of them. I wasn't able to consume anything other than good old H2O. Um, I remember in elementary school, I lived really close to the school, thank God, because from third through fifth grade, uh, they actually allowed me to leave the school at like lunchtime, walk home on my own, obviously, <laughs> and um, my mom would like leave me a key or whatever. I would go in the house, I would make myself usually, I mean, we didn't have a lot of money back then, so I would make myself like a little frozen dinner kind of thing. And then I would sit there and watch I Love Lucy all the way through lunch and recess, and then when I heard the bell, like, you know, the whistles or whatever to go line up, I would leave the house and go and uh, line up and go back to school. So those were the only times if I was actually able to go home and I knew that there would be some kind of food at home to eat, um, then I would, you know, go home and eat lunch. But anytime that there was like pizza parties or, uh, you know, like every now and again there would be like random potluck type of things where you had to like bring food from whatever country you were assigned in history class or whatever. Um, you know, those instances, I never once ever touched any food. And if I wasn't able to go home to eat, uh, which for the most part, especially after elementary school because the other schools were further away, then I just wouldn't eat. And so that went all the way through middle school, which was three years, and through four years of high school, and also into other social situations. And the reason that I couldn't bring myself to eat was that I was fat and I was self-conscious about that and I felt bad about myself and I thought that other people thought bad things about me and some of them did. But I think a lot of them didn't. And they just really, honestly, especially as you're growing up and when you're younger, people just don't care. They don't care about you. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but they care a lot about themselves. Think about this, right? Who do you think about the most in your life? Who's your main concern? Who's your main focus? When it comes to eating meals, who do you really care about? Like, who do you care eats? You or some other chick that you go to school with? Do you care if that girl eats? Or do you care if you eat? Do you care if this girl's walking around hungry or do you care if you are walking around hungry? You let me know, because for the most part, it took me a long time to realize this, people care about themselves. Especially when you're younger, everyone's a little self-conscious. Okay, that goes into adulthood. But everyone's self-conscious, everyone's still trying to kind of figure out what they're doing, also goes into adulthood. Um, so they're mostly focused on themselves. Now there are bullies, there are people that are rude, there are people that have problems with themselves and so they, you know, say mean things or do mean things to other people to make themselves feel better, make themselves feel a little less empty, whatever it may be. So I was always terrified that that was gonna happen to me. I was mad, I wasn't mad, I was, well damn, I was hungry. I was hungry so much, like, especially because um, I never had time to eat in the morning. Uh, my mom always worked like uh, a shift that basically, she wasn't there in the morning, but she'd be there when I got home from school, but she'd leave kind of in the middle of the night. So we would just, you know, fend for ourselves and stuff in the morning and for lunch and whatever. Like she might leave us some money or something. Um, but in the morning I would hardly ever eat just because there wasn't enough time because I was the one having to force myself out of bed and I just wasn't very responsible. So I would never eat in the morning and then I would always have a bottle of water at school and um, when lunchtime came I was normally really hungry and I just wouldn't eat. If I did go into the lunchroom, the cafeteria, if I did actually go 
you know, during my class period or whatever, then I would just buy water. What I was really afraid of is that if I ate the food that everyone else was eating, the, the pizza or the burgers or the fries or the cheese or the chips or whatever, I was afraid that people were gonna call me a fat ass and tell me that oh, that's why you're so fat or whatever, right? And then I was afraid if I ate something else, if I was eating a salad or freaking munching on some carrots or something, then I was afraid of people making fun of me for attempting to not be a fat ass. It's kind of like you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. You know, when you're fat and you want to go to the gym or you want workout clothes that come in your size, you know, then people want to bash and say, well, that's where you shouldn't be so fat or make fun of you for trying to go to the gym and trying to work on a machine and maybe you don't know what you're doing or maybe you're sweating profusely or whatever, right? Because it's your first couple times there or whatever. I still sweat like a maniac and I have been going to the gym regularly since like the day I had, like four days after I had my surgery is when I started going to the gym again, um, which was last May. So I'm still there like looking like it's my first day almost every single time and people will rag on you for being fat and attempting to be less fat. People will rag on you for being fat and not attempting to be less fat. People will rag on you for being fat and getting more fat. Like no matter what, the people that were going to say rude things to you, they're gonna say them anyway. It doesn't matter. Like if someone is so jacked up within themselves that they need to make fun of other people or be rude to other people or try to make other people feel bad, nothing that you do or say is gonna change that. Those people are the problem. You and your life and who you are, you are not the problem. And so I guess you, you just kind of have to accept that. So eventually I got out of school, right? Yay! I did end up going to college. I went to a couple different colleges. Um, and it took me forever to get my bachelor's, but I did finally get it. Yay! Um, but in those, the, it, it was the same. It was the same in college. And like, I was grown by the time I actually finally graduated. I think I was like 25, 26. And um, it didn't matter. It didn't matter that I was like, you know, at that point I was a self-sufficient woman. I was a mother of two kids, like, it didn't matter. I still could not eat in front of people. And when it came to dating, oh my gosh. Because one of the parts of dating, right, is like going out to eat. At least that's what I would do. So the only time that I was okay with actually eating is when I dated a guy who was, he was probably, I mean, he was over 400 pounds at the time. I don't know how much he weighs now, obviously, but when we were together, he was over 400 pounds and I was probably like 250 and by the time we broke up, I was like 290 or something like that um, because we would eat together because he was the only person I could be comfortable eating with because he was bigger than me and we were both fat and we couldn't help but do anything but be fat. Like, we walk into a restaurant or a store or anything, we're fat and you can tell we're fat and we're two big fat people together and so I'm like, you know what? They're gonna talk so we might as well eat, all right? Because we're both hungry so let's just live this life. And uh, that was the only relationship that I was ever able to actually eat in. And then anytime I dated someone who was like thinner or fit or anything like that, um, I just couldn't. I couldn't bring myself to eat with them. And it was so difficult because we would go out to eat and I would have to order things like, it didn't matter what I ordered. I would order the things that were like the cleanest to eat, the simplest, right? I would never order like spaghetti. Oh my gosh, I can't imagine getting sauce on my face. Because in addition to not wanting people to talk about what I was eating, I also didn't want them to talk about how I was eating. And that's because I never wanted to look messy. Because I never wanted to look like a damn pig. Because I never wanted to look like I was scarfing food down or I was, um, just like so incapable of taking my time and being clean because I was just so fat and hungry all the time and like raw I was very hulk about it, right? But that was another thing that would stop me from eating so in relationships It was really difficult. I had to be slick and sly. I had to wait till he turned or went to the bathroom to like <laughs> like actually eat something here I'm so hungry um, and I would you know constantly push the plate away when there was a lot of food left on it still just to make it look like mm, yeah look at me I just ate a crouton and that's it mm, so full <laughs> excuse me right like that's how I acted and it sucked it sucked it sucked so bad it took me so long it wasn't until I got pregnant that I could even really truly sit down and eat with um, the kids dad because I was like listen now I'm pregnant now you got your whole baby inside of me I'm gonna eat, we, me and the baby, we are hungry. And I don't care how messy it is, we're gonna eat it, I'm gonna rub it on my belly, she's gonna absorb it through my skin, like don't judge me at all, okay? So I was telling this story the other day basically to um, Louis G, and he's an athletic guy, I mean, and he always has been. So I was telling him like how I used to sneak away and like how I would wait till people turned maybe to like sneak a little piece of something from my backpack, which I would like keep on my chest, like, you know, just to keep it as close as humanly possible. Um, I was telling him that and how like uh, back in the day, our house, 
because I have four brothers, right, they all have friends and predominantly male friends. Um, our house was the one that everybody would come to to hang out and stuff. My mom was really cool about it. So I would be so mad, right, when like I was about to eat dinner or I was about to like go just max something and then all of a sudden my brother's friends traipse through the door and I'm like, great because now I can't even eat my own house. And sometimes they wouldn't leave for like four days. And I'm like, don't you guys have homes? I'm starving to death over here. Like I couldn't bring myself to eat in my own home because there were other people there. There were boys there especially. But it wasn't just boys. I couldn't eat around my friends either. My friends were thinner than me and they would have sleepover. Oh my gosh, sleepovers were like torture because I'm like, damn, I'm gonna go to your house at like four and I'm not gonna get home till like noon the next day. And I can't like, what am I gonna do? Like pack snacks and like shove them in my pocket and meet them in the bathroom? Actually, that's a good idea, you know? Like it was just so, difficult it didn't matter who I was uncomfortable around anyone but myself basically you know so basically if you struggle with any of these things that I'm telling you I mean I could go on and on and on and on and on with these stories because I struggled with it for so long and in this situation that I'm in now like this is the first time that I've, a I've been able to you know go out to eat with a man basically and not feel pressured to be a certain way and it's because I made the decision like, I made the decision a couple years ago, like, you know what, if I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna go on a date or I'm gonna do whatever, I'm gonna be around people, like, I can eat around my friends and stuff now, um, but if I'm gonna be around, like, a man, like, a potential, you know, suitor or whatever, uh, then I'm gonna eat and I'm gonna be who I, like, I have to set a precedent. I have to eat from day one. One, because I cannot be in a relationship, I cannot be in a situation where I feel so uncomfortable with myself that I can't even do this very basic human thing. Everyone eats. Skinny people eat, fat people eat, old people eat, young people eat, white people eat, black people eat, everybody eats. And it's natural to eat and be hungry at regular times of the day, like lunchtime, when you're at school or you're at work or you're around whoever, like it's totally normal to want to eat. And whether you want to scarf a burger down or you want to daintily eat a little lovely salad with tofu and stuff on it, whatever. Yo, do people put tofu in salads? I'm making tofu later, so it's like on my mind right now. Um, <clears throat> never thought of putting it on salad though. But like regardless, it's okay to do it. It's normal. I wish someone had taken me and just shaken the crap out of me and told me this and made me believe it because it would have saved me a lot of struggle and a lot of strife. And I will not say that there were never instances where my crazy brain that was thinking all these like, oh, well, what if this and what if that and what if that? I can't say that those thoughts were never justified because sometimes people did make comments or they did look at me and say dumb stuff to me. Um, you know, if I did try to branch outside my box there and, and, and eat a little something in front of them, um, sometimes people would say rude things to me. And I have gone on uh, dates, one person in particular, because I really don't date, it's not something I do, um, but I was on a date actually once and multiple times actually with the same person and he would constantly make comments about what I was eating. I mean, and I already knew this dude was not the dude for me, but I was going through some things and the situation worked for me at the moment. Um, but he would make comments about me putting mayonnaise on a sandwich. He would make comments about um, me eating too much garlic because, you know, if we were gonna kiss or something later, or whatever, like he didn't want me to be foul, basically. Not in like a little cutesy way, like, mm, your bread's gonna stink later. Like, I still love you though. Um, not like that, like in, other ways that I could tell he was trying to tell me something. He was trying to control, you know, my intake. He was a fit guy and uh, he was aware that I was not, right? I was not a fit guy. <laughs> I was not a fit girl. Um, you know, and, and he would do things to make me feel bad about the things that I was eating. And if you're in a situation or in a relationship where that's happening, that's not your fault, right? The way that that person's looking at you and treating you, that's not your fault. And it's rude as hell of them to do that. And whether it's a romantic partner or a friend or a parent or a sibling, like don't internalize all of that stuff. Don't internalize their crappy opinions of you and their rude way of addressing anything. If they're concerned about your weight and your health or whatever, and it's coming from a genuine place where they want to help and they want to approach that somehow, 
cool. They should attempt to learn a better way to do that and navigate that conversation with you, okay? But for the most part, that's not where it's coming from. It's coming from people trying to be dicks. And I'm not with it, okay? So if you've ever gone through any of this stuff, I mean, I hope that this video helps you just seeing that other people have gone through it too, and it does eventually get better, but you have to make the decision to fix it because it's not just gonna fix itself. Like I said, I've had this problem since I was in elementary school. I was like eight, okay? And all the way through the time that I was like 25, 26, 27, damn. I'm getting old, but yeah, all the way through the time I was about 26, 27 years old. Um, it wasn't until I stopped and I made the decision, I'm gonna do this, and if somebody makes me feel crappy about it, then I'm not gonna remove food from my life, I'm gonna remove that person from my life because they are the problem, not me, okay? So I just hope that this video helped you guys in some way. If you enjoyed Dear Fat Girl, uh, please subscribe and you know, follow my channel or whatever. <laughs> um, also, if you guys have any stories similar to this or you guys wanna share your experiences or anything like that, then um, please leave them down in the comments and give me a thumbs up if you did enjoy it, if this was helpful. And if you wanna see more Dear Fat Girl videos, the more you guys ask for them, the more I will do them. If people don't really like them, cool, I'll lay off. But <laughs> um, that's all I have for you guys today. So I hope that you enjoyed this and Frankly, I hope it doesn't relate to too many of you and many of you think that I'm just an idiot out here like, why is she talking about this girl? I was always eating. Like, I hope that's who you were because that's not who I was and I wish it had been. But anyway, I hope that you're having a great day and I'm gonna see you in my uh, next video. Bye guys.